describe an experiment to show the force on beams of charged particles that move through a magnetic field. Now this effect is very much the same thing as a current carrying conductor that is in a magnetic field. So let's say we've got a, a piece of wire which and we've connected it up to a battery or a cell so that we have a current flowing in it. And let's say that that is in a magnetic field. And we can use Fleming's left hand rule and we will find that there is a downwards force on this current carrying conductor. Now this is exactly the same thing for charged particles except instead of the particles moving in a metal such as a, a metal wire the particles are just flying through a vacuum for example on their own in a beam. So this exactly the same thing would happen. This positive charge would experience a force downwards and it would tend to be deflected. So let's take a look in more detail. First of all, we need a beam of particles and the easiest way of doing that is with an electron beam. So we would have an electron or many millions of electrons and we would then fire that beam into a magnetic field. Now the magnetic field what we're going to do is going to be into the page and we can denote that with crosses just like arrows that are speeding away from us. You would just see the, the back of the arrow which is where the feathers are. So our magnetic field is going into the page. We have an electron beam Okay, and that electron beam, as it enters the magnetic field, will experience a force. So hang on, how do we work out which direction the force is going to be in? We're going to be using Fleming's left-hand rule. Left-hand rule, because this is still the motor effect, just applied to charged particles. This is the motor effect. But take care because Fleming's left hand rule relies upon conventional current, conventional current direction. And here we've got electrons which are negatively charged. Remember, conventional current is a flow of positive charge from positive to negative, and that's how physicists define current direction. So the current direction of this electron beam is in fact the other way, that is the conventional current. So okay, well let's use that now and we'll use Fleming's left hand rule with that conventional current. So we can say that current is going from right to left, even though the electrons are moving to the right, the positive flow of charge is to the left. There's our current. We have a magnetic field which is into the page. If you hold up your left hand in that Fleming's left hand rule formation with your first finger, second finger and thumb pointing all at 90 degrees, then always start with the first finger field that points into the page. Then line up your second finger with the current and you should find that we get a a force, that's your thumb, pointing down. And so this electron beam, when it enters the magnetic field, will experience a force downwards. There's our force. And so it will be deflected. It'll start to move in a circle. Each time it moves to a new position, we can try Fleming's left hand rule again and we'd see now that it's moving in a different direction that the force also moves to a different direction, always actually pointed towards the centre of a circle. And so this will describe a circle in this magnetic field, this electron beam. Always 
a force towards the center of the circle. Okay, so that's a great experiment to see the effect of a magnetic field on a beam of charged particles. How would we see the electrons? Well, with a little bit of gas in this chamber, the electrons or some of them would collide with those gas molecules and make them fluoresce, make them glow slightly. So you might see something like this. This is a coil which creates a magnetic field. And this magnetic field is coming out of the page. So we can represent it with little dots like the tip of an arrow. The electrons are coming here. That's the beam you can see. They're fluorescing on the sheet of fluorescent paper. And it's bending upwards in this case. And if you try Fleming's left hand rule in this example, first finger field that's coming out of the page, second finger current. Remember, current is going the other direction because it's conventional current. We'd see that the force will be upwards on that beam. This is called a Helmholtz coil, and it's a good experiment to show exactly what we've been describing in this flashcard. How would we generate the electron beam? We can do that by boiling off electrons off a cathode, a hot filament cathode, just like a, a filament bulb, and accelerating those electrons in a, an electric field with a positive anode, and we'd get our electron beam out the end. OK, another really useful aspect of this effect is when we're probing matter, when we're looking at the effects of uh, subatomic collisions at the nucleus level, and we're discovering new types of particle and new types of matter. This is called a cloud chamber. And a cloud chamber is used to view the the trails of particles as they go through it. They leave little vapor trails, just like airplanes in the sky. And uh, the particles which spiral around must have a charge because there is a magnetic field in this region, in this cloud chamber. The particles that go straight through, however, don't have a charge. Otherwise, they would deflect. We can tell quite a lot from this diagram about the mass and charge of the particles just by looking at the size of those spirals and the radius of the curvature. So there's your experiment to demonstrate the force on beams of charged particles that move through a magnetic field. Just watch out if you're dealing with electrons, then conventional current must be going in the opposite direction.